Hi everyone, this is Joy and Jason, and we're here to do a little commentary on our recent uh, ride to Lake Waramug, in which we rode up uh, Route 341, also known as Seeger Mountain. And so segment details are located at the top left, and you'll be able to see all that information about the climb itself. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, I'm just gonna explain to you guys, if you're new to looking at what the metrics on the screen are, um, I'll explain to you a little bit about what you're looking at. So on the left side in the blue uh, are Jason's metrics. Um, we have at the uh, power, uh, which is measured inside the uh, circle there. The, the power is measured in watts, and that's really how hard we're pushing on the pedals. So the harder you push on the pedals, the more power you generate. And there is a calculate, there is a way to calculate power, but we're not going to go into all the details on that. Uh, cadence, you can see there where it says RPM. So it may say 92 RPM, it may say something else. So that's how quickly or slowly we are pedaling. And heart rate is measured in beats per minute. Um, and you can take a look at mine as well on the right side, which is in green. Uh, you, can, you can compare all these metrics uh, side by side. So, um, did you want to, Jason, did you want to say a little bit more about yes. what else we're looking at in the screen? Um, well, we're looking at a big booty right there for starters. Um, but yeah, Joy, Joy also has the, uh, the elevation profile up on the upper right there and I see you've all, you also have the temperature mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was that warm uh, that day I didn't I don't know how accurate the Wahoo collects the temperature but according to the Wahoo it's saying uh, it's now gone up to 84 so it could be how um, it could be just the um, if it's a tree covered a tree lined road then the temperature drops but right now we don't have um, trees well there are trees on the left side of the road that's covering that side of the road but um, if it's beaming down directly down on us then the temperature increases yes and, oh, go ahead. Um, yeah so this is uh, oh and then there's there's also the there's also the grade um, the grade there which you know gives you some indication of uh the incline so this this climb is pretty moderate overall as you can see uh it's average grade a little bit under four percent and that's because it's although the elevation profile doesn't um really look like it there it's kind of a kind of feels like uh like a few uh steps of stairs almost where there's a um a few parts that are on the steep side where it gets over 10% grade. And then there's a few parts where it flattens out or even goes slightly downhill uh, for a short time. So that's what, what makes the grade kind of, um, kind of on the lower end overall. Uh, you can see right here with a 2% grade, this is one of the flatter sections. And the grade just tells you the pitch of the road. And so, you know, the, the closer we are to the double digits on the grade, the steeper the road is. The closer we are to zero, the flatter the road is. Basically, that's what the grade is. Yeah, and I think we, speaking for myself, but I'm sure Joy was doing the same thing. Um, I think we were using a pretty full range of gears on our bikes for this climb because, you know, when you get to those flatter sections, um, we were using the big ring and you know are able to uh to keep the cadence fairly high even with a bigger gear but um when it starts getting steep and there's i think the first steep section is coming up soon you can see that um yeah you can see it up ahead that when we hit that you'll see our our cadence drop um and we're also shifting down to lower gears so on the steeper sections, I was personally, I was using the lowest gear possible on my bike, which is the, the 34 cassette, the small ring and the 34 cassette. Uh, so I was trying to keep my cadence as high as possible, given the amount of power we were doing. And as far as power, um, 
I think Joy had had told me before we started the climb that she was shooting for an average watts of around 180. And so toward the beginning when we started the climb, um, at one point she told me that my my pacing uh, up in the front was was pretty comfortable. So I at that point I checked what power I was doing and then I said, okay, if Joy's comfortable doing this power, um, I'm just gonna try to maintain this similar power for the, the rest of the climb. So I was trying to stay kind of, for me, I, I, I was trying to stay sort of in the, the 210 to 220 watt range. Um, obviously I'm overshooting it a little bit here on the steeper section. Yeah, and I just wanted to just point out um, to everyone the stark difference in our heart rate. Uh, you could see in Jason's side there how his heart rate just falls around 140. Right now it's at 145 and mine is at 184. So um, significant difference in heart rate. Um, it was kind of funny because I was telling Jason this uh, yesterday that on my Wahoo, I was looking down and I saw that I was doing 180. And then I thought, well, man, I'm doing a pretty good job keeping it at 180, thinking it was in my power number. So I thought I was doing, I was hovering around 184, 180 watts. And come to find out towards the end of the ride, <laughs> I was actually looking at my heart rate and not, and not my power. Um, so that was funny because, okay, right now you could see that my heart rate and power are actually similar but um, I was actually putting out more power than, than I had, than what I had wanted to do. I, I wanted to hold 180 watts, but um, I was actually doing a little bit more than that. Yeah, and on the heart rate thing, um, to begin with, m my heart rate is on the lower side. So um, just because it says 142 there, it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not, it doesn't mean I'm noodling. Um, for me, heart rate in the 140s is kind of like tempo. Um, my max heart rate that I've ever seen on the bike was 172. And that was uh, the first time I did a 20 minute FTP test. So uh, 142 heart rate for me is, is um, it's still pretty comfortable, but it's, yeah, it's in the tempo range. Yeah, and I think some people, um trained by heart rate and I actually used to train by heart rate when I used to uh, train to run um, but I don't anymore because um, right now I'm doing 180 or so beats per minute and that's actually zone four for me and yes my heart is about to was about to, it felt like as though it was gonna uh, pop right out of my chest but um, I can hold that heart rate for when I, we did this, it was like 24 minutes. So I could hold that heart rate for a good uh, amount of time without feeling like I'm dying. Uh, so heart rate is really relative. Um, so if you're looking to train by heart rate and cycling, I don't really know if that's the best thing um, you know, to use as a metric. Definitely um, we use power to train. So um, we always found it to be uh, beneficial to us. So right here, you can see Jason is touching his left hand. Um, he got stung by a yellow jacket. So he's trying to swat it off. Yeah, and I think I, I was, while, while I was trying to swat the yellow jacket off, because it was stinging me and um, I, I tried to swat it and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't budge at first. It was, it kept stinging me. So, you know, that got me sort of, yeah, that's probably why I'm swerving there. I'm trying to swat it off. And then I think I started going a little, doing some extra power unknowingly. Um, and Joy had to tell me to, to back off a little bit. And I was trying to explain, oh, it's getting stung by a bee. Yeah. Um, so I guess another thing that I wanted to talk about was the cadence. Um, and I, when I posted in the past videos of our uh, our climb analysis, you know, people have commented about how we should be doing uh, 90 plus RPMs. And sure, um, I guess 
you know, highly trained cyclists can do that. Um, we've only been riding for two, two and a half years. And so, and I think, I personally think cadence is a choice, a personal choice. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and, you know, some people increase their cadence to get different types of systems going and uh, whether or not it's your aerobic versus your muscular. Um, and so I tend to, uh, I tend to run a lower cadence and here we're doing a 7% grade and before it was 10%. So the steeper the grade is, I think it's natural for your cadence to drop because you know, there's just a lot of resistance, uh, against you. So, um, yeah, I, I tend to naturally run a lower cadence than, than others may. Yeah. And I think, um, although the, the pro cyclists typically keep a pretty high cadence, even on the climbs, um, you have to remember that they're, they're putting out, you know, 300 to 400 Watts, you know, on probably the whole way up a climb. And, you know, when you have that kind of power, it's, it's a lot easier to, to do a high cadence. I mean, I, I could pro right here when, when the grade is close to 10%, if, if I put it in my lowest gear and, and did 300 Watts, I probably could have my cadence, you know, 85 or higher but i can't hold 300 watts for very long so that's another you know consideration is that when you know unless you have pro level power is sometimes when the grades get steep it's it's pretty hard to do a high cadence unless unless you have super low gearing and you know there's nothing wrong with having really low gearing but personally i think that for me the the 34 cassette is a good balance. I mean, it's it um, it allows me to get up pretty much any climb without failing the climb. I might have to grind it out sometimes, but uh, if I had a bigger cassette, like a you know a, a 40 or 42 or something like that, I probably would almost never use it. So for me, the 34 is is something that's actually you know, something that I use fairly often so it's a, it's a about the right balance for me it's never too grindy or never too spinny um for me i run an 1132 cassette um, we both run 5236 in the front um and i i just feel a little bit more comfortable with the 32 um i was considering doing 34 but um i feel like i have i don't really have a terrible issue with uh climbing um there are some super steep climbs uh not a whole lot of super steep climbs but i've been able to make it up those climbs um i'm gonna i'm not gonna say with little effort but with uh, with a lot of effort but somehow i still make it up those climbs so i really and how often for me i don't really know how often we go up these really steep uh roads and so i just kept it at 11:32 because um, I don't want to sound like a weight weenie, but I think I'm starting to be one because um, that's some of the things I also consider because if I get a larger cassette, it would be a little heavier than what I'm running right now. And so that's why, you know, there, you always have to consider, I don't know how much more um, it weighs, but uh, the 1134 weighs uh, compared to the 1132. Um, so that's always things that you want to consider. Um, and it's not like we are carrying, uh, we both carried two bottles and I have a, um, I actually have a, a saddle ba saddlebag uh, hanging off my, my seat and I also have a top tube bag. So uh, it's pretty weighed down uh, as it is. And I still, you know, I, I think I, I, I'm, I still do a pretty decent job at, at doing these climbs. Um, even weight down. Yeah, we have we have to balance balance out the the weight versus uh, supplies that we bring because this this is a um, this was one of our long rides and it ended up being uh, close to five and a half hours. So when we're on that long of a ride, 
obviously we need to you know to bring fuel um so that we're not having to we do stop uh to to lately we have been stopping at convenience stores to get more water rather than bringing you know three or four bottles of water on us all the time we just bring two bottles and then refill them but we bring most of our food uh carrying it on us and and um, the food you know when you eat them right like i brought with me five cookies and they were pretty heavy so as soon as you eat them you know they start to take they shed weight off of you so well i guess so i guess when you think about it the, the weight just goes into your stomach and it's still probably on you but um but yeah i mean it's it's pretty important to fuel for a long ride so it's it's probably more important to fuel properly than to to try to cut you know weight by by not bringing food uh you know just just to get up a climb a little bit faster oh yeah so speaking of fueling this is probably the first ride that i've done in a very long time where i felt pretty good at the end like i actually felt decent and um like i said earlier that um i brought with me five cookies and the cookies were 260 calories each and i was also drinking my calories so um, each bottle had 110 calories of my electrolyte mix and i was feeling really good i actually had two cookies prior to this climb and uh i always I don't have the best confidence when doing long climbs like this, especially when there are steep ones, because they tend to, I don't know, it's just always been in my, it gets in my head. But um, yeah, this is, uh, fueling is definitely one of the key things that, um, to, to keep in mind when you're doing long rides. And I've always struggled with fueling, and I think it's important to just train your gut, uh, so they say, to, to, handle to to be able to eat food um, whether you're you're drinking you're eating gels or you're real you're eating um actual food sorry we're outside and so the dog's barking rudy stop it um so i think it's important to sorry guys you're just gonna have to hear the dog in the background <laughs> I think it's important to fuel uh, long rides and train your stomach as much as possible. I remember last year when we did our CTGF, um, which I'll link that video in the description. Uh, when we did our CTGF, it was just really hard for me to take down food. I felt like I was going to puke um, after doing this climb. And I don't know, I just, uh, I think it takes time and, and don't give up on it if you, uh, if you feel gross and disgusting and just uh, your stomach is in all sorts of knots um, after doing a, a long climb like this, uh, don't feel like you should give up because give it time because your body does, your body will adjust to it. Um, and that's what I learned in this ride was, man, I didn't realize I took in over 1800 calories on this ride. And that's actually more calories than... I burned total this ride. Um, yeah, this, this this climb was right about in the middle of our ride. So it was pretty important that we paced it properly. I mean, we we both wanted to, to do well on it or possibly get a, a PR on it. Uh, but at the same time, we had to think about the fact that we still had um, you know, probably 35, 40 miles to go after doing this. Wait, hold on. Did you want to talk about your fuel? What, what you fueled with? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, my, my let's get back to the fuel part okay. and then we can talk about pace. Yeah, sure. Um, so, well, before this climb, I think I, uh, I had one of those cookies that Joy was, was just talking about, but, um, Typically, my fueling is pretty consistent uh, on our rides. I bring, I bring a few bananas. I I eat these uh, these date balls that I make. It's basically just a a mixture of uh, of dates, oats, and honey that I just blend together, and um, that's 
that's most of my solid fuel, uh, solid food. And then I have um, a small, bo small bottle of uh, pure maple syrup that I'd bring in and take like shots of it. And, you know, then we have, have our electrolyte mixes also. Um, so, so for me, I typically, I'll take the maple syrup either right before doing a tough effort um, or and or when I get tired of eating solid food. Uh, personally, I like the liquid calories before a hard effort because I don't feel it in my stomach um, and, and you know, don't feel nauseous or anything on the hard effort. And then at other times in the ride when you know we're just doing zone two, then I'll try to take in the solid food. Oh yeah, the cookie I had um, probably 20 minutes before this climb. So I had it when we stopped at the store. Uh, so it, I, it gave it time to, I think, to digest. Otherwise, I don't think I would have had, I, I, I don't think I could eat the uh, solid food right before the climb. Yeah, it all depends on the timing. If, um, if you have enough time to digest the solid food before doing the, the hard effort, then it should be fine. So um, I guess let's talk about pacing next since we're almost at the top of the climb. So um, pacing strategy, um, I think I mentioned it earlier. My pacing strategy was just to hold 180 watts up this climb because I've done workouts before, uh, sub-threshold workouts where it's 20 minutes or 25 minutes long and I was able to hold 185 watts. So that's really, um, you guys, if you do workouts like that, um, always look back, take a look at the climb and see um, how long it may take you to do, um, depending on the length of the climb and uh, the, the grade. Um, but you should also look at how others, if you have Strava, you can see how others kind of, how quickly or slowly others have done the climb and you can pace it that way. At least that's how I pace uh, my climbs. Um, yeah, so I think I knew going into this one that Joy wanted to do around 180 watts. And uh, for me, I wasn't sure exactly what that equates to for me, but I, I thought it was somewhere in the range of um, 210 to 220 in order to, so that I would have the same watts per kilo that Joy was doing. And, um, yeah, early on in the climb, she, she told me that the pace was good. And at that point, I think I was doing about 220. So then I, I kept doing that for a while. And it might be helpful to, if you are riding with someone, it might be helpful to, to maybe tell them what watts per kilo you're doing. If you have that ability to know, um, right off the bat, what you're doing watts per kilo wise. Um, I didn't have that up on my screen. And so, um, unfortunately, I, I, I was just going by, I know at Zwift, usually at 180 watts, it's about 2.7-ish watts per kilogram. So that's what I said to Jason. And I don't know, you know, if he knows, you know, I just assumed that he knew what his 2.7, what 2.7 watts equated to him. Yeah, I actually have... Um we have the Wahoo uh, element by computers and I actually have watts per kilo as one of the metrics on my screen uh, for that reason. And I, I added that a little while back because, you know, when Joy and I used to communicate about what kind of watts we're doing, um, you know, sometimes she would tell me, you know, I want to do this many watts. And then I'm like, I, I have no idea what that okay, equals for me. So it's to, to make it comparable. Wow. Um, you know, like Joy just said, watts per kilo is, is a good way to, you know, to make your, your effort comparable. And so I just added that as a, a metric on my, my bike computer screen so that if Joy tells me she wants to do a certain watts per kilo, I can just focus on my watts per kilo number rather than my actual watts. And it's a simple calculation if you don't know what that is. It's basically your power divided by your weight in kilograms. So you have to, if you're doing pounds, you convert it to kilograms and you just do um, your power divided by 
your weight in kilograms. So um, this is uh, nearing the end. Actually, this is the end. This is now downhill. So the segment ended a while back um, where you saw those other women who were climbing the other side, uh, the other side of this, of this yeah. mountain. Yeah, and that is it for today. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this little talk session about our, our climb and with all the metrics on there and hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, don't forget to enjoy your rides. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.